Okay. I'm watching you. Alright. Hey. Thank goodness. <laughs> Did Mario 3D Land do the exact same thing? Am I my funniest one? I'm the oh gosh. Those things are scary. They only even appear here. These these enemies on the sides, they only appear in this stage. I seriously can't remember them appearing anywhere else. I'd probably be wrong, but jeez. Uh, yeah. I'm good. Oh, I gotta do that sheep thing again. Ugh. It's not, it's not annoying, but... <laughs> I mean, the first stage was a lot simpler, wasn't it? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 32? That's a strange number, isn't it? Okay, I'll be able to start this recording. Hey guys, it's Bano, and I got that gobbo, don't worry. First go, actually. Um, so here is the password. I don't know if it's changed or anything. I, I'm going to save on top. On the PC version, when you got all six... All all the gobos in the first three stages. In the PC version, it would unlock the special stage straight off, because there's no gobbles, there's no gobos in the boss in the boss stages. There's nothing in the boss stages, so don't worry about redoing boss stages. In fact, the boss stages are probably the easiest of the stages. They're tricky, but they're the easiest. So anyway, the boss stages have a cutscene of basically how the boss comes to be. Pretty much all the stages, they they're just regular animals, just magicified. <laughs> I swear this guy should have boxing gloves. The loading screen isn't as fancy on the on the PC, by the way. It just as loading, it's a bit bland. Um, <laughs> this is strange, isn't it? What you do is you just point in the direction. Running doesn't really do anything. Considering considering what they've got for this game, they could pull off anything. And in fact, they do that. You may be wondering, oh, it's kind of bland, it's just kind of caves and grass. That's just the first world. That's only the first quarter of the game. Um, in fact, yeah. Um, the first quarter of the game is just grasslands and stuff. But considering we've got lava in the first stage, or stuff, the stages have all been kind of different, and, you know, they do, they do quite a few different things. Um... In the sequel, they do a lot of different things, in fact. Um, mainly because they do less stages, but they do quite quite more memorable stuff. And there's a lot more side features and stuff than the second game. The second game is like the Zelda... Um, no, it's not the Zelda 2. It's like the Spyro 2. In fact, compare this to Spyro and Spyro 2. In, um... So yeah, here is the boss. The music is still exactly the same. Basically, you just wait for him to do that, and then you hit him. How many times? Take a big guess. Seriously. It's a 3D platformer. How many hits would the boss take? How'd you miss that? Seriously. Oh well. He's not too tough. You just run around. I will say the camera is a bit awkward because it doesn't really look at the boss. But for the most part, yeah. So if you're playing on the PC or the Saturn, it should look just pretty much the same. The Saturn version has a few graphic bugs, especially if you have the disc in before the before you start up your Saturn. Because then everyone's missing their heads. That's kind of important. Also, the bosses don't die, they just kind of stay still. Seriously, they just freeze up until the end cutscene. In which case... Whoa. And that's it. I don't know why reviewers don't like this game. It's a very good game. 
So anyway, here's the bonus stage, it just pops up. But we're gonna jump straight into the next stage. So you're not gonna know what that password is. In fact, I don't know. If, you, if you're gonna put a password, just put it in the last one. For the most part. Use your save games to mark your progress, but then just use passwords to jump into... Use passwords to just jump into the last stage. So one block. Very nice. It's not Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo takes five, jeez. If you play Gran Turismo 4, that takes one and a half megabytes. Ugh. What is this? 2007. Save data takes a lot of room nowadays. Pokemon has a lot of save data it needs. Um, so anyway, yeah. I didn't see what the stage was called, but who cares? How do you jump on that? First of all, I would. Oh, also, you may also not like that all the enemies respawn. I'm gonna need that guy. I believe you want to go up top. I might be wrong though. When they give you two doors, it's like, which one do I go through? <laughs> but considering I got two doors, let's just say it'll be the top door, because why wouldn't it be the top door? Oh, thank goodness, it's a lower thing. I want to stand here, so I jump on this. So I can do that. And I can come out the bottom door. Thank you very much, game. You explained it so well. This is why I like Argonaut. They just... They did so many good things. Although, as I said in the history thing, though, the main developer is now working at Q Games, and I haven't played any of their games, because I unfortunately don't own a PlayStation 3. I own a 2 and a 1. Yes. Um, anyway, yeah, this is the first time I've ever used a PlayStation emulator. For good. <laughs> uh, one thing that kind of turned me off was just the setup. It required a lot of setup. You needed to hunt down BIOS files. You needed to hunt down ROMs. You needed to hunt down drivers. Because, unfortunately, it's a bit like a, a mess. It has a bunch of drivers, but nothing... But, I don't know. Oh, goodness. Get on the box. So this stage is mostly caves, actually. Um, yeah, it requires a lot of setup. Thankfully, there are nice handy guides that tell you exactly what you want to do. See, I've got that key. Now I can just go straight to the end. Or I can go straight to the locked door. There's probably a gobo at the end. Yeah, there's a gobo at the end. They're pro they're it seems like they put a colored gem in that crate, and the other one would have like five crystals or something. It's always, it's usually five. Sometimes they do six, like they did in that one stage. For the most part, it's it's five. In fact, in the sequel, in the sequel they did something kind of fancy with the crystals. They turned it into a currency, which you can buy items from a shop to unlock secrets or stuff. Mostly worked. The only problem is that when you get hit, I believe you lose all. I, I think you lose twenty. No, no, when you, when you get hit, you don't lose any, actually. You don't lose any crystals, but your health has become a heart meter. So the hearts actually become actual health, and you just take enough hit points. Um, of course, hitting lava three times only counts as one hit. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I remember this, I just can't remember how you do it. Ah, this is how you do it. They are so mean! So mean! And I love them for that. Because they, they can do anything. And it'll be good. Which one is it? One of these will have a gobble. Okay, the closest one has the gobble. All the rest just says a lot of gems, which is... Gems? Crystals. Why was I thinking Spyro? This isn't Spyro. Um, but yeah, in the sequel, it's kind of weird, because you just have health instead of crystals. Crystals are a currency, then. Of course, there is a way to pretty much bypass everything. Well, not bypass, but do a lot. <laughs> get the crystals very quickly, because unfortunately, you'll have to go through thick and thin trying to get all 100 crystals in a the stage. There's no bonus for that as well, just getting a lot of money. Except for one stage, which is terribly easy in it, and once we get to that game, I will be abusing that as much as possible. One, because it will eliminate backtracking, pretty much. 
because it because if you have the items, it's easy to do stuff. Okay, cave fear. It's not like cape fear. I don't know. Um, such a good game. How come nobody's played this? Well, actually, a bunch of people played this. I messed this up straight off, didn't I? Or did I? I had honestly never heard this music until now, and I am going, how the heck did I miss out on this? This is, this is genius music. And they pretty much did the exact same style of music for the sequel. Which is exactly what they needed. Arg. Yeah, for the most part, stage, the stages are actually quite self-explanatory. You just kind of do stuff. But they put the gobos and stuff in now for each places and so, so you guys take the effort into getting them and stuff. You'd probably want to get them, but you know, you, you can beat the game without needing to get any. Ooh. Oh gosh. Ah, oh, stuff that. You may also see similar designs and stages. Just because you will be pleased though that the worlds don't have similar levels. They all they all have completely different levels. This is Oh, I remember this. This is such a pain. One, because you have like the Q-Berts here. I don't know what they're called, but they look like q -Bert. The music's very cool. When I say the music is cool, that's just because I'm noticing it right now. I've honestly never gone through the game with the music. So it's like... I know, it's a bit sus that the music just never played. It's kind of sad though that the developers... <laughs> it's... It's a very well designed game, actually. Oh, and also, usually when they put... Uh, crystals in a round circle, it's usually just for collectibles. For the most part, the the actual colored ones are in quite obvious places. I didn't, I didn't really mean it that literally, but okay. Oh, of course, there's nothing to block here. Now you need to get that key. How are you going to get it? Well, first of all, I've got all the colored gems, so it doesn't matter. I pick up here. But anyway, the game has 63 audio tracks. The PC and the Saturn version both have 41 and slightly truncated audio stuff because they read it like a music CD rather than from audio that's on a disc, so to speak. So, whoa, 18 frames a second, yo, fraps. Again, grab the key at the top. And then if you want... I failed. Oh, the key is in the... Stacked chess, chess boxes. You know, all of these bonuses were five stages in, but they've done something completely different for all these. Are you freaking kidding me? You missed that. All right, I literally did that just so the boxes would respawn. How the heck did you miss that? Unless if it's behind. Oh, it's behind. Okay, in that case, that makes sense. Okay, I'm a bit happy because of that. Okay, 12 minutes, I think it's good. In fact, you know what, I'll, I'll finish the world because it'll be good to finish the world. Darkness Descend, ooh. So here's the password. By the way, the password is the same on both the PC and the s s PlayStation. I know that because I did a, the end game password on both. It worked. So yeah, don't play this, don't play the, the PC version on your 64-bit computer. It doesn't work. Like, it'll, it'll, it'll run, but like, the graphics will just be all messed up. Like, like, everything will just be all psychedelic colors. Um, and it's not good for your health, looking at psychedelic colors. Emulate a PC, okay, sure. Emulate a 32-bit PC. Use, like, Windows 8 pre-release. Seriously. Oh, you've got to be... <laughs> Uh, and you may be wondering what happens when you lose all your lives, well, it's just exit the stage. Yeah, you see what they did there. Um, so anyway, there's monkey bars, oh goodness. If you play Crop 2, you'd know that there's plenty of monkey bars. There's plenty of them. 
Why am I hitting triangle? I have to I have to remember that I'm not playing a um first person shooter or whatever. No, I'm not into first person shooters that much. I own a lot of them, unfortunately, because they do have very fun multiplayer. But the single players, goodness, single players on shooters. After Quake 2, nobody did the nobody did them well. Oh gosh. You gotta get on it, it just runs away. How do you do this? It's tricky. I do remember this. This is very fun. See, look at this! Different stuff! Every stage so far! You know what? They do this different stuff for a lot of the stages. It's just that they're very whimsical about it in this first world. And then when you finally stand on it, boom! Gobbo. It was running away from you. I'm sorry, you're not you're not a dragonfly from Spyro to the Dragonfly. Why are you doing run away from the main character? <laughs> oh fun fact, there was one voice actor for the entire game. So all the enemies, all the, even the end boss and stuff, and Croc, all use the same voice actor. I will say though, it kind of does reek of the 90s of early 3D. 3 games where they, where things only existed just to be functional. Like who cares that there's a bottomless pit? Oh, there you go. Who cares that there's a bottomless pit which has no purpose other than to just kind of see generic, except generic. I think generic is the word. It's like it runs with generic. So you could call it Vista because that's what Vista is. Good, good sight. Um, and don't worry, there's no, like, hidden walls or whatever. If you ever played Quake, that's just difficult, finding all the secrets. Secrets. Secret! Oh yeah, climbing walls, that's a bit <laughs> strange, isn't it? Um, end level, right there! You may be going, oh, goodness. But we've only got four gobos, we need one more, before we get to the end. Well, that'd probably be... Oh, I remember the end of this stage! I definitely remember the end. Wow, those two last gobos weren't too tough to find, weren't they? Yeah... Okay. Okay. So you may be going, what the heck? Now, if you see water like this, where it's like really blue, go ahead. You know why? Loading screen later. It's a swimming stage. <laughs> Where are we going? What the heck? So anyway, swimming controls, you basically kind of... Mario 64, pretty much, including the constantly pressed uh, jump in order to do the breaststroke rather than just the kick. He's a crocodile. He kind of has to swim. But, you know, the, for the most part, all the water has been lava or something. And believe me, in World 3, they do a lot of these water stages. It... I like the lighting, it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, lighting on the PC version is actually very strange, because it's all 256 colors. So, the lighting just kind of fades in, which is very strange. The lighting works a lot better in this game, uh, in the PlayStation version. The Saturn version probably works quite well, too. Of course, when you use DirectX uh, rendering on the PC, it works fine, but, but unfortunately, it started crashing, so I'm just like, stuff it. You know, that update, that 1.1 update, I I spent so much time looking for, like, I seriously. Uh, and this is Fight Night with Flibby. That's the password. Oh, gosh. So we're gonna save the game. Cause why wouldn't you save the game? Oh, yeah. Why do I sound so weird? I am such a weirdo. Okay. It's time to fight tonight with Flibby. Now you may be wondering, what is this? What is this boss? It's gonna be. It's a ladybug. Oh. <laughs> uh. By the way, these cutscenes you don't have to watch. All it does is literally explain what the boss is supposed to be. Ah, so he's got the boxing gloves. Also, that graphical glitching is just what the PlayStation does. If I was on the PC, it would look a lot better, but I wouldn't have music. This stage annoyed me as a kid. This is this is probably one of the stages where I just got extremely annoyed. So, spinning platforms, okay. 
You know what also works? Spinning platforms work a lot better with um, tank controls because it kind of confuses the player. Oh, my ears! Here's a tip, don't gather tons of rings <laughs> at once. Okay, here it goes. Oh, my ears! Oh. But yeah, like if I face forward, you know what, actually? If you're above the platform, it does that. Oh, I just realized there's no crystals. So I just jumped to the stage. Um, it was basically at this point where, I, where the game was just like, yeah. It's like, so you've done the first world, I'm, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start throwing stuff at you. Basically, yeah. Any, remember, boss stages, all they're gonna give you is tons of crystals, because they want you to, to survive during a boss. It's not like Sonic 3, where the last stage, oh wait. Yeah, it's not like Sonic 3, where the last stage is actually... Sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic 3 just kind of jumps into the boss at the end of the... Well, just jumps into a boss in the third stage. But Sonic 1, the third stage, was actually a proper third stage. Yeah. This music is awesome. Pretty much all the bosses do the same thing. Oh, wait. For the most part, you just wait for them to, to attack, get tired from their own attack, and then... I'm sorry, that camera kind of looks a bit funny when it goes outside the stage. Stand still. Let them attack. Oh, whoa, where'd that crystal come from? But this music is so good, I had never heard it before. Well, the sequel uses one pretty similar music, so I'm kind of used to it. Oh, look at that ladybug go! Very masculine voice for a ladybug. But then again, who has ever heard a ladybug? Well, I mean, I know you can hear ladybugs, but it doesn't sound like this. Oh! Whoa, the first enemy who actually died. Rather than... No, he didn't die. Oh, I'm just a regular ladybug. You know what? They're just like, oh, I'll be on my way. Whoa. Now, so you may be going, where are we going next? Well, first of all, there's a new stage, the Twisty Tunnels. That was the Kirby Cabins, but now it's the Twisty Tunnels. But we're going to be on to the Ice of Life. Oh, yeah. There's a password, and I'm going to save. So we're into the Ice World, which will be our next part, because Ice Worlds are very fun. Twenty percent? Are you serious? This might take us like under five hours. Seriously, no, it won't. Okay, see you kids then. Woo!